Hey, it's Tom from the Kavona team here with a quick example on how you could use the uh, C Geometry World Position render element in post process. I have a scene here that I've already rendered. It's set up with some trees from i2's forest pack and rocks, uh, and I use the forest pack to scatter those across a deformed grain plane, uh, and a free HDRI from uh, Peter Guthrie as the background image. And uh, to set this up, all you need to do is add the uh, C Geometry World position. And with that added, there are uh, no parameters for that. You can just go ahead and hit render. What you will get is uh, this separate render element that contains the X, Y, and Z information of every pixel in the scene. Now, your first question may be, well, there are lots of X, Y, Z positions. Why do I just see these two colors? And the answer being this is actually 32-bit information. So uh, there's so much information that cannot be displayed on your monitor. But if you right-click with your mouse, you'll be able to take a look at that information. Um, for example, here, the red is a value of 1,702, obviously well outside the usual 0 to 255 uh, image range that the monitor can display. So all that information is actually contained in there, even though it may look a little bit odd to the eye when uh, converted to display on the monitor. Now, I'm going to add one extra thing about the way this scene was set up. I did actually add a sky dome, or in this case a sky sphere, surrounding the scene. This is not for reasons of lighting, uh, but simply because at this point here, I do actually want some XYZ information. I want there to be some geometry so that the point isn't counted as infinitely far away. If there was just the background image, then that can uh, cause some issues uh, using the information in post-process because effectively there's nothing there. And for what I want to do with it, and what I'm going to do is add some uh, fog in Fusion, uh, then uh, having no information would be uh, problematic, or could be problematic. So that's why I wrapped up the scene inside the sphere, and that way even those locations have some uh, position information on them. So that if I want the fog to drift up over the sky, at least I can get that working. With that done, all you need to do is uh, hit save. And we are actually going to save it to uh, an open EXR because I want to combine the world position uh, path and the beauty path in, in one file. You can save them to two separate files so long as your uh, world position is saved as a 32-bit image format, you'll be fine. Or a 16-bit half float, but I'm going to use 32-bit. So we'll set that up. Save. And so in this instance, I'm going to choose the full float, 32 bits per channel, GPA. And, and make sure I include the world position information. I can either add that manually, or what I'm going to do is just automatically add remove render elements and then hit save. With that done, it's time to jump over to uh, Fusion 8, and I'll show you an example of one way that information can be used in post process. We'll see you there. So here we are over in Fusion, and what I've done is add some post process fog having it uh, hide down here in the hollow. And I'll take you through uh, quickly how I got that set up. Now, I'm no expert in Fusion, but this is just to give you an illustration as to how that uh, world pass information could be used. So you start with a loader, and you bring in your EXR file. If we drop that in there by left-clicking, holding, and dropping it into the window, you can see we have our beauty pass, but it doesn't look quite correct. And that's because we need to correct for the uh, gamma. I'm just going to do that using a gamut, connect the two together, and we set the output space to sRGB. And now I'm going to drop that in for preview, and we've got our beauty pass. Uh, good thing with this is it does not adjust your uh, world pass information. Now, one other thing we need to set up is to tell uh, Fusion where to collect the additional information that we put in the in the world position pass. And to do that, select the node, uh, open format, expand the channel list, and you'll see that uh, Fusion does have X, Y, and Z position information it can work with. We just need to tell it where that comes from in our EXR. So that's world position red, 
world position green, world position blue. And now uh, Fusion knows where to pick up that information from in my EXR. To demo how that can be used, I'm going to go with volume fog. And I just connect the gamut into that. Drop that in there. Now what volume fog does is create a 3D object, either a cube or a sphere, uh, and it, that has an XYZ position in space and a scale and a rotation, so you can move it around. And um, Fusion will be able to work out how that looks based on the XYZ information from the image. Right now, it's covering the whole image. So there are two quick ways I'm going to set this up. First, I'm going to put a camera position in just so that the camera is located somewhere in the range of values that I have in my scene. Because obviously it's XYZ, so depending on the scale of the scene and exactly where you were in the world space uh, will determine what those values are. And the next thing is to set the location of the fog. And um, this is how Fusion works, by the way. If you left-click on Pick and then drag into the scene and let go, you're actually uh, choosing that uh, set of coordinates for the XYZ position. Now, my scale is pretty big, so I'm going to have to make that fog object somewhat larger. Uh, and you can instantly see how it's using the XYZ information. Uh, and I can scale that down a little bit and you can see how it's working. Slightly more sophisticated than just uh, Z depth. And let's try the sphere. Now, simply moving these will let you adjust its position in the scene. Let's lower it down. And I'm going to soften the edge on it. Let me go back to the cube. Yes, I think I prefer the cube in this instance. We can put that in there. Uh, a lot of options here for the volume fog. I'm not going to go through it since the tutorial isn't specific to that. It's just giving you an example of how the information can be used. But we can uh, ad adjust the color gain. We can change how subtractive or adaptive it is. One thing I like to do is enable light options. Uh, and then you have a whole range of values that you can play with. in order to come up with a kind of effect that you want. Uh, and you can add some noise. You can control how that works. I'm going to bring the scale of the noise down a bit so that we can see it a little bit more. Let's do that. As I say, I I've only really just started testing this out, so you can adjust it um, yourself. And there's a lot to play with and a lot to try out, but you can get some very interesting results. Uh, one other thing I should note is all of this can be animated. Um, all you need to do is right-click. Uh, if I choose Animate, I'm going to animate just the X offset, but I'm going to animate the whole Translate group. That turns these green because a key has been set. Then if I move to a, a later frame, uh, I could, for example, let's raise this up and we'll move it off some. Uh, it sets a new key for those two and now my fog will animate across the scene. The last thing I'll notice is the sky. Um, let me just bring this up. And I'm going to make it a little bit more solid. And you'll be able to see how it does, in fact, go over the sky. And without my uh, sphere that I had added, then that effect wouldn't happen because there'd be no XYZ information here. And the results may not be as expected. But in this instance, by adding that sphere around the scene, I um, have been able to get the results that I was expecting. So that's just one example of how you can use the um, world position information in post-process. 
I hope you find it interesting and inspiring. Fusion 8 is available for free, so if you want to follow along and do this exact effect, you can grab yourself a copy. Um, there's a free version as well as a studio version. And I hope this inspires you to come up with uh, some of your own images and start playing with the world position information in post. Thank you.